Rachel and I set out to make a documentary about one of the most baffling cases of serial murder in our time, that of the Long Island serial killer, AKA Lisk. A case that only grows grislier with each discovery. But what we uncovered went beyond our worst nightmares. I remember the first call he said to her, are you a whore like your sister? Where should we go find him? Where should we look? On that page, same way he finds us. Our journey has led us here to someone using the Suffolk County Police's IP address, who has suggested this mysterious person is the Long Island serial killer. What this edit did was change it from the Gilgo killer to Joe Foti. Either someone has an ax and grind. Or there's a guy who believes it's him who works in Suffolk County PD, and they're putting it up there, even though they can't prove it. The post had raised enough suspicion for all of us including some of the victim's family members, to investigate further. Will you look my house today? Yes, okay. we're looking for you. It's not a good thing to do. But the only way to know for sure was to play this voice for Amanda, the sister of Melissa Bartholomew, because it's believed Liz called Amanda to taunt her with details of her sister's death. Do you think if we played it for you, you could remember his voice? Possibly. You can just press play. I don't know. I feel like he has like too strong of a New York accent, but he could have been trying to hide that when he called me too, so it's like, I don't think so. Don't think so. Mm -mm. You know, you may be the key. I know, unfortunately. Any reason why he called you? I have no idea. You're asking me the same questions I ask myself every day. I wish I knew his intentions. Although Amanda didn't recognize this voice. Thank you. The fact still remains that someone, using Suffolk County Police's IP address, posted this name. Was it a prank, a vendetta, or something more? We may never know. Looking at the Gilgo Beach Four, we know all four women were neatly laid out, approximately 500 feet apart. However, there are six other victims who are also connected by their disposal along Ocean Parkway. And while most remain unidentified, there was still much to learn from how and why the killer positioned them as he did. Which brings us to the next chapter of our story, when police would discover Fire Island Jane Doe. Six miles west of where the GB4 were found, police unearthed a female skull. Through DNA, the skull was matched to a pair of severed legs found on neighboring Fire Island in 1996, and then found less than a quarter mile away from Fire Island Jane Doe was the mystery of Jane Doe number three. I'm just looking for like some sort of clearing. There's no uh, memorial. Yeah. You know, if she had a family and they knew she was here, they would come out, they'd put a cross. That didn't happen. Yeah. On April 11, 2011, police discovered a dismembered skeleton wearing two gold bracelets inside a plastic bag. She's found here seven miles from all the other bodies. What's interesting is right here is a county line. On this side is NASA, on this side is Suffolk County. He's basically dismembering bodies and throwing some in Suffolk County and some in Nassau County leading to a lot of confusion. He knows what he's doing. The tragedy here is that they were able to make a DNA match from this woman, Jane Doe number three, to this unidentified child found basically seven miles away. On the opposite end of this burial ground, police unearthed a female toddler wearing jewelry similar to her mother's. Like, it's, it's not enough for him to kill a child, but to take that child away from his mother 
You could have had at least the decency to bury them together. Sad. We believe she had to be a sex worker. And then the question came up, how did the toddler get involved? You get called to do a trick, and you have no one to watch the baby. It's not unlikely taking the baby with you or maybe having a significant other come with you to watch the baby while you do the trick and then go home. <laughs> with the serial killer, no one's going home. But there were still other theories to consider. Why are you assuming that she was a sex worker? Maybe she's not a sex worker. Uh -huh. Maybe it's more of a relationship. Could this be Lisk's own wife, who had uncovered her husband's dark secret, and a child would become a liability? Whatever the truth, it was becoming even harder to imagine what kind of monster we were dealing with. It's July 9th, six weeks into Lisk's hunting season. As Rachel and I continue to revisit his dumping grounds, a number of questions keep coming up. Namely, how did this killer leave 10 bodies along this highway without getting caught? You should start slowing down, probably. There's not many roads like this out in this area. There's lights on other parts, but this section has no lights. We're waiting for a car to appear in that rear view mirror, and then we're measuring how long it would take for that car to kind of really get close. I see some. It's starting. Still got a little time. Still got time. Over a minute. Now it's getting close. No, no, now, okay. now, yeah, so minute 15, really. And that's that car right there. That's plenty of time. Absolutely. The killer knew this area really well. Another question we had is why were four of these women found whole and wrapped in burlap? Where is she, Rach? Here. This is where Megan Waterman was found. Gone but not forgotten. Your spirit lives within me. The GB4 are all carefully laid out at the same strip of road. It's right here. They are carefully wrapped into burlap. So this is a uh, marine. And this one was, again, 500 feet from the other one, right? This is a trophy collection. So this is... So this is Melissa. Bartholomew. So this is the cross of Anne Berlin Costello. This is Kim's sister. That's all that's left. And one last question. Why were some victims like Jane Doe number three found dismembered? So Peter, what do you think? There is a theory that he became comfortable with killing and got too lazy to dismember his victims. The theory is very far-fetched. So GB4, this is collection behavior. This guy is a collector. The other cases, this is a sadist, an extreme sadist. Two different cases, two different personalities. You're not dancing with one serial killer. You're dancing with two. thousands of missing persons in our country. We don't have law enforcement agencies working together. There is nobody trying to connect the dots. I am aware of other serial killers that I do know personally. Are any of these guys still out there? Yes, ma'am.